In this lesson, we're going to continue with the notification setup. After installing the SDK with CocoaBot, the next step now is to add the required capability. So in order to do that, you say you should select the root project under capabilities. So let's select the root project here. And then under the capability here, you can see the capability you want to. So let me increase this so that you can see properly. You can see that whenever you select your root project, then you have all these options. So you want to select one that say uh, capabilities. Okay, so let me move that across. And then we want to enable the push notification. So push notification here, let's enable it. And you can see it's going to add the push notification feature to the app. Okay, now the next is to enable the background mode. So let's look for background mode, this one. So enable that one as well. And as soon as you enable it, you have to check remote notification. Okay, so at the bottom here, it says remote notifications. So check that. And now that will uh, enable the background mode. So the next thing is to now add the following code to the app delegate. So what we we'll do is we'll go to the app delegate. Let me give, let me give more space. Okay, now that we're inside the app delegate, first of all, we want to import one signal. So import, import one signal. Okay, if you don't, if you don't find one signal when you're trying to type it, it means you haven't built your app. Make sure you build, because every time you install anything through CocoaPod, always make sure that you build your app. So once you've done that, you need to have this code. You see inside the did finish launching with option, which is this one here, this first function, you want to paste this code there. So it's not a lot of code to be honest. It's very basic. Now let's copy this code and then paste it here. Here you can see, say your app ID, which is the only thing that we need. So let's go back to the web and Remember, we haven't completed our setup. We need our app ID. That's why I left this screen open. So I'm gonna copy that and then paste it where you say your app ID. And that should be the final thing that we need. At this point, we can uh, run the app. At this point, we can run the app. So what I do is I'll select uh, iPhone 7 and I'm going to Command R to run the app you will get a comment in the console that tells you that you cannot run the app on simulator, but it's fine. It's fine. We're going to run it on my device as well. So let's wait for the app to run. As you can see, it prompts us, even though we're on simulator, push notification, we would like to send you notification. Uh, let me show you, I'm gonna drag the Okay, so let me go back to the simulator. Watch what happens when I click on allow. You can see that it gives you the information true back. So that means you can run some kind of logic within this place when the user accepts it or not. Okay, now that we accepted that, let's go back to the web. Let me make the screen big. And then let, let's check for subscribe user. Um, you can see that the message is quite different now, even though it's a success. You say the, your user failed to be subscribed. The iOS simulator does not support push notification. Please test using a physical iOS device, which is a good news because at least it shows that our app is working. Let's go back to Xcode. Okay, so I'm gonna select my device Okay, so the app is launching. So let's bring, there you go. So this is app now running on my uh, device. Okay, so if I click on allow, it's asking me, so I'm gonna click on allow on my screen. And as you can see, it says here, uh, true as well. This actually, this is an actual device. I can show you that. So as you can see, this is my actual device. So now that we've run the app on our device, 
what I'll do is I'll go back to the web. So let's go back to the web. And if I should click on check subscribe user, you can see now it says, congratulations, your first user running an iPhone 8 one has been successfully, has been subscribed successfully. Click done to exit. So that completes our setup. Even though it seems like a long uh, process, it's actually not a long process. If you go through the videos again, if you do this two more times, you will find out that the process is quite straightforward. But like I said, because one signal is one company that changed the implementation so often, uh, check back to the documentation screen to make sure that these steps has not changed. If these steps has changed, please inform me and then I can update the lessons. Uh, let's go to the side we here where it says all users. You'll be able to see that we have an iOS simulator, which is not supported, but uh, it's still telling my location, country, the app version that I'm running, and then my player ID. We're going to talk about this player ID uh, very shortly. But this is my device, iPhone 8.1, and subscribe is yes. Thank you.